It's five o'clock on a Wednesday, and it's time for... The Craig and Ronan Magic Review Show. I'm Ronan. I'm not Craig. <laughs> Got you again. Uh, welcome back to another review show right here on... Magic TV. Yeah, thank you once again for joining us. It's that time of the week where we get to have a look at four brand new tricks. Now, I've got to tell you right now, if you're looking for the latest, the most inspiring tricks, if you're looking for things to spend your hard-earned dollar on, this might not be the show for you. There are a couple of good tricks... Uh, but there's a couple that's not very good at e as well. But, you know, it's the luck of the draw. We look at what we've got to review and we take it on a week-to-week -week basis, don't we? Yeah. Now, the first trip we're going to be looking at, we're going to have a bit of an argument. That's it. That's right. Craig and Ryland having an argument live on the review show. And the reason is he likes this travesty of rubbishness, whilst I think... Uh, sorry, he, I, I think it's the worst trick that's ever been invented and had the indecency to grace God's green earth. If you want to know what we're talking about, let's have a look at this pile of steaming poop. So the first trick that we're looking at today, um, and the trick that's really, really, really me, made me question Ryland's ability to be a magic reviewer, is the appearing phone. Now... Let me just give some context here. When I saw this, when I saw the trailer, I was like, oh, that actually looks okay. In fact, I talked about it with Lloyd on the podcast. I was like, yeah, that, that, that's okay. That's not a bad trick. Quite like that. I think it could be quite good. Um, <clears throat> so we got it. And uh, me and Ryan looked at the tutorial. What is the tutorial? Like four minutes or something? I think four, four and a half minutes. Yeah, and it shows you what to do. Yeah, you don't, it doesn't Wait, need to. Going. doesn't need to be longer than four and a half minutes. You know, it doesn't take long. Does it? No, it doesn't. I agree. It only takes four minutes to teach somebody how to polish a turd. It doesn't take long at all. Um, and and Ryland watched this tutorial. And while Ryland watched the tutorial, I just kind of watched it as well. And um, yeah, you're about to see a performance that Ryland did for Instagram. And And have a look at this performance. After the performance, we'll talk about what we think of it because he likes it i don't like it and uh you guys can make your own mind up let's have a ryan and film this for instagram despite my warnings not to he did so let's have a look at uh, the appearing phone i'm 11 now and for my birthday i asked for a phone but my parents didn't give me a phone they gave me a phone case but unfortunately for them i took the phone case packaging and did this i made a real phone appear so let me tell you why I didn't like that trick. First of all, it doesn't look very good. So you've got this container that's the size of a phone, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it just looks like a container. I mean, they've made an effort to make it look like black art. It doesn't look like black art. It, it, looks, it doesn't look like black art. Why it for you then? It, it doesn't look like black art. It really doesn't. Why it for you then? When I saw it in real life, Ryland, it didn't fool me. Yeah, it bored you on the trailer. Oh, exactly. you. Look, shut up. When you see this thing in real life, it just looks terrible. It doesn't look like black art. What it looks like is you've got this container, you hold it, and a little piece slides down, and then you see part of your phone, and then you take your phone out. The one redeeming quality this thing has is that it's a real phone that you make appear. But you can't have the thing examined. You can't have it preset. Uh, so you can have your phone in there, but when you take it out, you're going to have to do something with the gimmick in order to get it into position. Yeah, so you'd have to... Yeah, two seconds, it's just done, ready. Okay, and then you hold it and you go, hey, I've got a phone case here, there's the nothing in it, and people won't believe you for a second. And then and then you go, ta-da, now my phone has appeared, and they're going to go, hang on, isn't that bit just slid down there? That that That's obvious. Can you do something else with the Rubik's Cube? Because the cap was just complete crap, that's what they're going to say. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we reviewed The Appearing Doll and its incredible use of pink art <laughs> instead of black art. I would rather, right, right, I would rather go and perform The Appearing Doll on national television. I'd rather go on America's Got Talent, stand in front of the judges and do The Appearing Doll than ever, ever, ever doing this trick once. It's dreadful. Come back. Why do you like it? It's good. It looks good. It doesn't look good. It does. It doesn't look good. What part of it looks good? My phone looks good. 
It doesn't look good. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. It doesn't look good. I thought you did. The, the trailer made it look better than it actually was. No, the trailer. It is what it is. It's not what it is. <laughs> it's not. Right. Question. It is not what it is. Have you, it is what it is. have you performed that in front of real people? No, because I haven't done a gig since I got it yet. Okay. I got it like literally a couple of days ago. So you're doing a gig this weekend? Mm hmm. Not on stage, we're close up. Okay, yeah. okay. There's going to be people in the bar beforehand. Yeah. Go into the bar. I'll film you doing this trick to people. Yeah. And I'll then put the camera in their face and I'll ask for their honest reaction. And I'll say, be honest, what did you think of that? Okay. Oh, yeah, you're that confident. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that's what we're going to do then. That's yeah. what we're going to do. Yeah. Deal. Okay. Deal. If you want to embarrass yourself, then that's absolutely fine. But if so, they think it's good, you've got to give me ten pounds. Okay, I can do that because I know that nobody will say it's good. <laughs> nobody will say it's good. So yeah, I, I, I think it's terrible. I'm going to channel my inner Ireland here. It gets minus one million billion trillion quadrillion dizillion but brilliant million, million Zelda to the power of Minecraft minus infinity cluely points. That's how much I'm giving it. Jeez. What are you giving it? Um, 95%. What? 95%. 95% percent minus what I said uh, for me. Uh, it's 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 what not did you very, say? I said minus something to do with Cluely. I don't know. There was a lot of there was a lot of Minecraft. There was some Minecraft and Zelda in there as well. It's dreadful. It's just dreadful. To infinity. To infinity and beyond. It's dreadful. Don't buy it. Please don't buy it. Ignore what he said. You you have two choices here. You can either listen to the person that's been reviewing magic tricks for the best part of 20 years. Somebody that's been that's on really the wizard. Somebody that's been on the wizard product review. Which proves that he's really old now. Mine's can... a little old buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. So normally, you know, we've had one terrible product. And, oh, and we're on to... It was terrible. No, it was normally we're on to product number two. We wait, bounce wait, back. Wait, 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 wait. In that last one, you said Zelda and... Minecraft. Minecraft. Yeah. They're good. Oh, are they? Sorry. Yeah, so you're saying they're good. I don't understand the rating system, obviously. <laughs> right, listen. I, nobody can understand your rating system, mate. Me and Matt have sat around trying to figure out your rating system. We can't do it. Right. Zelda equals good. Oh, does it? Right. Okay. So does Minecraft. Or does clearly equal? Bad. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so normally, with the second uh, product, we'd bounce back with something incredible. And, and, and who is here to save the day from that travesty of product reviews that we just had? Who else but John Kennedy? John Kennedy, the man, the myth, the legend, the person responsible for the Kennedy Mystery Box. Absolute gold. The person responsible for uh, Impossible Matrix. Absolute gold. The person responsible for the animated cigarette, for the mind power deck. His hits keep going on and on and on. John Kennedy in this industry is a god amongst men. Surely he can come and save us with clearly out to lunch. Unfortunately, he can't. Yeah. We both agree that this isn't very good. Um... Before we talk about exactly what it is, you filmed this for Instagram as well. So let's have a look at a performance of Clearly Out to Lunch. Uh, a, if a picture's worth a thousand words, a video's worth a million. Have a look at this, check it out, and then we'll talk about what it is. Okay, so I've got my dad behind the camera and I've got a prediction. I've got a deck of cards. Dad, just say stop. Stop. There. Okay, so that's your card? Yep. You got it? We're got gonna it. lose that. Middle of the deck. Now, uh, I had a prediction here, like I said. And uh, what was your card? The Ace of Diamonds. The Ace of Diamonds. Well, I actually predicted the Ace of Diamonds. No way. I'll tell you what, I'll go a step further. I've got a Sharpie here. Uh, just sign the bottom uh, down there. There we go. Oh, it's came off. There you go. Just like that, okay? And uh, we're going to take that out and we're going to put that on the table. Like that. Okay, so uh, I'll tell you what, just pick another card. Just say stop. Another one. Stop. Because we're going to go a little bit further. What's uh, you, That's your card, okay? Yeah. We're going to bury that into the middle. And uh, what was that card? It was the two of hearts. Well, the two of hearts. If I just shake that ace of diamonds and give it a little snap, you can see that now that turns into the well, your card, the two of hearts. So, right, okay. I think we start off by saying this does what it's meant to do. What John has actually tried to achieve here is by supplying a gimmick that you can use instead of an elastic band to do out to lunch 
which gives the impression of being able to see through the gimmick the entire time. Because normally, when you've got an elastic band wrapped around the cards and you're hiding that half card, you know, you can't see. You just It's just assumed that that's a full card. Whilst what John's done here is he supplies a gimmick that you can um, adapt to any type of card that you're using for your out-to-lunch routines. And, and this gimmick will allow you to well, as you saw in the performance, it will wrap round, but it, it's almost like you can see the card underneath the elastic band. So I understand what John's tried to achieve here. It's been attempted by a few other people before. Um, I can see what he's tried to achieve. The now, problem is... you're going to say something, but yeah. I really want to say it first. Go on, what do you want to say? It solves a problem that doesn't exist. It does solve a problem that doesn't exist. It's a little bit like shooting a fly with a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> like... I don't think that there's many people that have done out to lunch as much as me. I love out to lunch. It's one of my favourite principles and I've got a ton of work on it, right? I've never had anyone go, well, excuse me, Mr. Magician, but that card that I signed did not look like a full card. I think there was a half a card hiding a full card underneath and you tricked me, Mr. Magician. You tricked me. No one's ever said that to me. No one's even alluded to that. And I work in venues where if people think they can figure out what's going on, they will tell you in a heartbeat. Uh, this doesn't... It, it, if anything, it makes it worse because an elastic band just looks like an elastic band. It looks like it's It looks like it's just wrapping around them just to keep them safe, to make sure they're all together. Whilst this looks like... Like this, a, it just looks like... It looks like a magic prop. It does. Now, there's nothing wrong with bringing out a magic prop. Like, a chop cup looks like a magic prop. That's fine. But when you're dealing with... Things that have already been done. Yeah, like... It, the, the, that the, doesn't look like a magic prop. Yeah, why not use an elastic band? It makes it look more organic. Like Ryland said, I've just, got some, I've just got some business cards here. The elastic band does what it needs to do. It holds the cards together. It holds the cards together. But That's it also, what I think it's going to do. Yeah, exactly. Whilst this, like Ryland said, it's just not needed now. That wouldn't be too much of a problem. You might go, oh, okay, I'll take a punt on it until you realise it's like 50 or 60 quid. I can't remember how much. So you're spending a massive amount of money. The amount of money you have to spend Something on clearly... Something going to go in your bottom drawer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The amount of money that you spend on clearly out to lunch, you take that money, you could buy Evoke and Magic Button, available from your, uh, your, uh, your favourite magic dealer. That's right, Evoke by Greg Petty and Murphy's Magic. Magic Button by Greg Petty and Penguin Magic, available from your favourite magic dealer. Yeah, Sorry. Sorry. I just went into sales mode there. I'm sorry about that. Um, but in all seriousness, $60 or quid or whatever it is, it's not cheap. I can't remember exactly the price, but it's not cheap. And all you get is you get this little rubber gimmick that you can... It took me like 10... Wait, do you have to supply your own business cards? Yeah, yeah, you do. No, so it just comes with the gimmick? It just comes with the gimmick. It doesn't even come That's with the gimmick. 60 quid! It doesn't even come for the gimmick made because you cut a because you can adapt it to other business cards. You've got to do some cutting and some. Remember, That's I said sixty quid. Yeah, I can't remember. It, it might be slightly less. I can't remember about about sixty dollars, fifty five dollars, something like that. Um, too the, much. Yeah, I agree. Five dollars, I think, to be honest, would be too much. But there you go. Um, but the other right, the other thing is the tutorial is not great either. It's no. it's John to camera. Um, just just talking about the gimmick and, and, and just, just suggesting one or two very simple out-to-lunch ideas. If this came maybe as a project with a ton of work on out-to-lunch, maybe this would have been different. The other thing is I do a lot of routines with out-to-lunch where I'm using a double out-to-lunch gaff. In other words, I've got a stack of business cards where the business cards are faced. And you've got two halves. Yeah, no, I, basically the, one set, the, the business cards are faced. And oh, there's so out to lunch face. set up on both. Yeah, and then you got one in the back. Yeah, and oh, you can okay. secretly turn it over. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that I do with oh, that. You couldn't do that with this, not unless you had like a double gimmick, which you can't. You can't get. So it eliminates. Unless you like cut the band in half. So yeah. And like get another one and sellotape them together. I'm not gonna be spending another sixty dollars on this crap. <laughs> so you know. One hundred and twenty dollars just to get a terrible gimmick. Yeah, so it's it's overpriced. And look, I'm always the one that says creators can charge what they want, and they can, but when you're competing against an elastic band, you know, I think you have to fo put some... Fo you know, that's it. If you, but somebody who's going to buy this, they're going to upgrade from an elastic band, right? 
So let's take that into consideration. I think it's overpriced. I think it's too expensive. Same thing. Made the same point twice. I'm pretty sure they'd rather buy a dirt cheap elastic band than a 60 quid gimmick. Yeah, take your 60 quid and go buy a book or something. You know, it's going to be so much better value. Go take, go, go, go do something else with it. I don't know. Go buy a beer. Go buy actually good magic. Go buy good magic. Um, or go buy Lego. Or go buy Lego. Or go buy the new Zelda game just for an extra 10 quid. It's only $70. What, is this a game you want or something? No, there's Elder Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, Kiss of the Kingdom, It's only yeah. 70. Yeah, it's only 70. Mm -hmm. So do something like that. Apparently. But this is, this is just, it's, it's, like you said, it solves a problem that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at no point ever will you have a spectator when you're doing out to lunch going, well, that was rather good, Mr. Magician, but I think it would have been a little bit better if maybe I could have seen underneath the elastic band. Have you considered having an elastic band that's got a see-through section there? I understand that it'll look like nothing on God's green earth, but I think it might make the illusion a little bit more realistic. Said no spectator ever. Love you, John. Love your work. Love your legacy. Think you're amazing. This is a bag of poop. Zero percent from me. What about you? Minus Clooney. Minus Cluley. Oh my God. He's evoked the word of Matt. There is nothing more terrible than a minus Cluley. John, I apologize. Here he comes to save the day, like a butt shot at the blue and a heart that's true. So let the trumpet players lay. Gustavo Raleigh's here to save the day. Gustavo Raleigh is here to save the day. Sometimes Gustavo brings out good stuff. Sometimes Gustavo brings out stuff that's not so good. Today, Gust good stuff. Gustavo's no. brought out the good stuff this time. He He's has come. come. He really has. He has. He's coming with a punch. He's coming with a punch. He's nailed it out <laughs> the park. He's here to save this travesty of a review show. Gustavo has, has, has put together something called Pocket Man or Pocket Mon. Pocket it's, a, Mon. it's a Pokemon. Pokemon. It's a Pokemon themed uh, magic trick. And Ryland watched this Hang tutorial. On, I need you to fight um, Charmander. <laughs> I can't think of way. Trying to be a serious <laughs> review show here. <laughs> it's not time for frivolity you need to and fight silliness. Charizard. Right, let me focus. Right, so Ryland watched the tutorial for this because the second he sees something with Gustavo's name on, he's like, mine. <laughs> My precious. He um, so he 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 grabbed it and he watched the tutorial and then he rocked into the living room and I'm just there cuddling my dog. Um, that's not you. I was actually cuddling my dog. I and, came in um, with a punch. He came in and he was like, "Going to show you a trick, Dad." I'm like, "Yeah, okay. It's going to be highly gimmicked if it's Gustavo." He's like, "Come over here." It fooled him. It fooled the pants off me. I had no idea how it worked. I couldn't figure it out. It fooled me completely. And then when Ryland showed me the method, I was so impressed. Now, it was like, Whoa! Yeah, I was like, it, I mean, it wasn't quite like that, but it was, it was similar. Like, it was also not like that. It was. No, it wasn't. We're going to have a look at the performance of Ryland doing this on Instagram. And then when we have looked at the performance, uh, we'll tell you everything that you need to know. Okay, so I've got some cards here. This is the back. And you can see the like uh, two different, well, two Pokemon balls. And on the front, we've got different colors. So you can see we've got an orange Pokemon ball. I'll put that one uh, there. I've got a green Pokemon ball. Put that one there. I've got uh, a blue Pokemon ball. Put that one there. I've got a yellow Pokemon ball. And I have the classic red Pokemon ball. So five different coloured Pokemon balls. Now these Pokemon balls are very special. Because uh, all I have to do is snap my fingers. And you can see that now... You can see that all what? the po yeah, all the Pokemon balls are on one card. And you see, from the yellow one, we have Pikachu. From the blue one, uh, we have Squirtle. And from uh, the green one, well, we obviously have Bulbasaur. And from the orange one, we have Charmander. What? So, I love this. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of an old Tenyo trick in terms of methodology but it's been bought bang up to date and there's a lot of principles in play. And what you just saw, it's that direct. You show all the Pokeballs, you put them down on the table. Mm -hmm. The last one, boom, attracts all the other Pokeballs. And, and then, you and then you, card. yeah, and then boom. And then all of a sudden, you get Pikachu, you get Squirtle, you get Bulbasaur, you get Charmander. 
I mean, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Anybody, you know, I mean, Michael O'Brien is probably having kittens at this point because Michael O'Brien loves his Pokemon and he's brought out a lot of Pokemon-themed tricks and I know that this is the sort of thing that uh, Michael O'Brien would probably love. Imagine if you get the um, one from Jamie and you get the, this one, Pokemon, and you get all Michael O'Brien's one. Yeah, you got a lot of You got Pokemon Stage Act. You really have got a Pokemon Stage Act. And talking about Stage Act, this particular trick, the cards are quite big. They're not... Um, yeah, they're, like, not like, they're not normal size playing Yeah, they're, they're quite big. I think that you could probably do this on stage. I mean, maybe if you wanted to, you could go to like a printing store and get some giant ones printed. I think, that would be cool. Yeah, I think that you could do this in a kid's show and you could have four of those card stands set up that Alakazam sell. And you could say, right, everybody, what colour is that Pokeball? Red. What colour is that wait, one? Wait, Blue. One what colour is that one? Orange. Or yeah, whatever. What colour is that one? Blue. Boom. And you say, look, I'm going to put the last one over here. I'm going to hold it here. And we're going to try and make all the Pokeballs jump over here. One, two, three. And you get the kids to shout Pokemon or something. And they all go over there. Yeah, and they're going to think that's the end of the trick. And you go, and have disappeared from here. And you turn it around and you go, look, they've disappeared. And they're going to shout, it's Pikachu, it's Pikachu. And you go, no, 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 no. No, Pikachu's not part of this trick. These are just all about Pokemon. <laughs> no, Pikachu, Pikachu, Pikachu. Pikachu, where did you come from? How did you get here? Anyway, like I said, all the Pokeballs have gone, it's Charmander. No, it's not. Charmander's not here. I just, it's Bulbasaur. Yeah. I just think this is the perfect kid show trick. Like, I think this is just perfect i really like this but also you could do it in a walk around situation as well you could do it in a yeah. close-up situation there's no angles it's really easy to do the gimmick does all the work for you um there's a couple of principles at play what's the tutorial like i didn't watch it mm. is it your typical gustavo really short thing yeah live performance four minutes, four minutes. uh he normally includes a live performance yeah i think Oh, yeah, uh, there was a, like, a studio performance to a little kid. Studio performance to a little kid. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Um, and, and obviously it was, I mean, four minutes is ridiculous, but... It's all, it, to be honest, it, it's kind of what it needs to be for this. Really? Unless you tried to come up with more tricks, but I don't really think you can. Gustavo. It's kind of just, yeah. Your next release, I want to see a nine-hour behemoth. <laughs> I want to see nine hours of Pokemon. I want 11 hours. I want, I want 11 hours. Step up, Gustavo. We want an 11 hour project on Pokeballs. That's what we want. It's what we want, and we want it now. Anyway, uh, I love this. I think this is great. This is definitely going down to my kids' show. I mean, maybe you're the only one that can do that. No, I think other people could do it. Maybe. I can't do it. It's 11 hours. 11 hours. Hey, my new coin set that's coming out at the end of 2024. I'm thinking it's probably going to be about 15 hours. Nobody's going to bother watching that then. Nobody's going to bother watching Shut up. Yes, they will. No, they won't. Yes, they will. It's 15 hours of... Exactly. It's just... 15 hours of coin magic goodness. No, it's it's 15 hours of you chatting on and on and on about coin moves. <laughs> just use it different ways. I'm giving this 100%, Ryan. And what are you giving it? I'm giving it 100% as well. 100% from Ryan and 100% No, from... no, I'm not. You're not? I'm going to give it... Plus Zelda. 100% plus Zelda. Wow. Is it going into your kid's show? Mm. Probably. You should do it I at the House so. of Secrets. I'm going to. Oh, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. 100% mm -hmm. from me. 100% plus Zelda from him. We've got one last trick. Let's get to it. So the final uh, trick that we're going to be reviewing on this week's uh, review show is by one of my favourite magicians. Uh, somebody who I know you haven't really studied that much because he does lots of card tricks. Uh, but Harapin Ong, uh, who has literally written the book on card magic and uh, then written it again. And he's back with a new packet trick. Uh, it's not a packet trick, that's giving it a disservice. He's back with a new trick that involves a small packet of cards. It's kind of a mentalism trick that uses a small packet of cards. It's called Jumping to Conclusions. Now, what you get with Jumping to Conclusions is you get two uh, packs, and I believe there's 20 cards in each pack. And the reason you get two packs is it's, in essence, the same trick, but he gives you two different ways that you can do it. Now, the first way, which is what you're going to see a performance of Ryan doing in a bit, the first way is with, um, they look like flashcards when you're trying to learn Chinese. So uh, the box says on it Chinese flashcards and the cards themselves have Chinese symbols on them. And underneath it tells you what those symbols mean in English. 
and you do the routine with those Chinese symbols. Now, in case that doesn't work for you and you want to go, you don't want to go down that presentational route, you get a second pack of cards, and the second one is kind of like ESP symbols. There's 20 different ESP symbols, but they're not just the standard ESP symbols. There's lots of different, basically, abstract uh, sort of images uh, that you can use to, in essence, do exactly the same trick but you just pick whichever pack you want to use based on your presentational style. So you're going to see a performance of Ryland doing this now to Thea, and you used the uh, the Chinese characters, didn't you? So you mm -hmm. used the Chinese flashcards. Um, it's kind of a really interesting trick. I don't want to talk about it until you've seen a performance of it. So this is Ryland performing the trick. Have a look at it, and then when you've seen the performance, we'll talk about how it works. Okay, so come on, Sister Thea, hi here. Hi. And uh, I've got some uh, 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 Chinese cards here, yeah? So uh, I'm going to show you a trick using these chi uh, Chinese cards. So uh, what we need to do is I'm going to deal down, and uh, you're just going to say stop, okay? Stop. That one? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you're going to have a look at that card. Tell me if it's upside down. It's upside down. Okay, so I'll turn it around. Is that the card? Uh, you got it? Yeah. Yeah? Now uh, take those cards and uh, shuffle it into the middle. Like, sh just shuffle it. In fact, to tell you what, just mix them all together, actually. Okay. You done? Mm-hmm. Yeah? There you go. Yep. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try find your card. It's going to be really cool, because I'm going to try find your card. Okay. Uh, don't look. I'm going to try find it. Don't tell me if I'm right. You can look when I put it on the table. Just don't Ah, uh, maybe that one. Don't tell me if I'm right, though. Uh, oh, that, that, that one maybe. Um, that one. Let's see. Uh, could it be? Oh, that one. I think it could be one of them. I think it could be one of them. Uh, right, let's see here. Are any of them your cards? None of them are my cards. None of them? Are you sure? I'm sure. So what was your card then? A three. Three. So. That. Yep. That one. Three. three. Uh, what if your card is. What if I told you that I knew your card was three from the very beginning? Well, you wouldn't. <coughs> well, I'll tell you what, look, I did. So if I lay the cards out like this, look what starts to appear. If I lay the cards out like that. Now the camera can see this, but I'll show you it from this way. Let the camera see it first. What does that spell for you? Was that your card? Whoa! Okay, so first of all, that was a really good performance. Like I say, Harrison is great. And what you see there, that is the effect. Um, it's not like there's multiple effects. This isn't a large project and there's lots of different things that you can do with these cards with the symbols on it. That, in essence, is, is, is what it does, right? Mm -hmm. And it reminds me, he credited, uh, on the tutorial, Harrapin credited Max Maven for a routine that he published in one of my favourite books, which is uh, uh, The Collected Almanac by Richard uh, Kaufman. Um, it reminded me, in all honesty, a little bit like Snaps. It reminded me of Snaps by David Jonathan, because with Snaps, you've got the images that are hidden in photos, and you've got the same thing here. You've got kind of, yeah. you've got, uh, you've got, sorry, not images hidden in yeah, photos. That's... You've got letters hidden in yeah. photos. And here you've got letters Wait, hidden. Yeah. yeah. Images or photos. Yeah, exactly. You've got, you've got letters hidden yeah. in the images or the photos. Yeah, that's what, that's uh, what it reminded me of. Yeah. It didn't remind me of images. It kind of reminded me of letters, but I'll, I'll go with it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, and this this feels like the same thing because it's kind of like yeah. you're creating words out of what yeah, the does. Chinese writing. Yeah. Um, so that is what it reminds me of. The difference is with snaps, I think it's more impossible to see until you point it out. Uh, I, th I think that snaps is a little bit of a better project than this yeah. because there's more routines that you can do with snaps. And I think that snaps hides the reveal of the letters or the word a lot better than this does. Not to say this wouldn't, it would, but I think I prefer snaps. That's the first thing that I'd like to say. The trick itself though is very, very good. Um, 
the method that, uh, that, that Harrapin uses when he performs this is very, very fooling. When you performed it, you didn't turn away, but you can. In essence, the way that Harrapin has structured this is that you show all of these Chinese letters uh, and this Chinese writing and so on and so forth. They cut the deck any time they want to and they complete the cards. You then look away and you can deal at any point they want to. They can say stop. You can show them the card and then they can shuffle everything together. And it doesn't seem like you could possibly know anything. You couldn't possibly know because they... They shuffle as soon as they picked a card. Your back's turned the entire time. So even if the cards were marked, it wouldn't help. And 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 the cards aren't really marked at all. Well, they're not marked. Uh, so it's a very, very fooling method. But in order to do that fooling method, and here's one of my issues with this. In order to do that that that, that method that, it, that is very fooling, um, there's memory work that needs to be done. So you need to memorise... A bit. It's not that much, and and Harrapin goes through the um, goes through a mnemonic that allows you to memorize it. You didn't have too much problem memorizing it. I mean, you 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 saw the thing, and yeah, I mean, you've got an incredible memory, so that helps. But you are going to have to memorize. I mean, there's twenty cards, and you have to memorize a bunch of stuff. Uh, I, I don't really want to go through what, but you have to memorise a bunch of stuff. And he talks about how to memorise it and so on and so forth. But you, you do have to memorise a bunch of stuff. Uh, as well as that, in order for this method, this super fair method that I described to you to take place, as well as all this memorization that takes place, you're going to end up with the cards needing to have a full reset. Because when the spectator shuffles the cards, you know, without giving too much away, the cards are in stack at the very beginning. The, the cards are stacked. It's a full packet stack um, and obviously when the spectator shuffles everything together the cards are out of stack so in order to do the method that Harrapin suggests that you do the cards then have to be put back into stack so you're going to have to go away somewhere take the 20 cards and stack them all back up one at a time in order to do the trick again so from a uh, uh, from the point of view if you want to use the method that Harrapin teaches Purely from a commercial point of view, um, it's 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 not the sort of thing that you could do at a gig where you're going from table to table to table without taking into consideration that reset. Um, now, one of the advantages of the particular routine is it is a different outcome every single time. So if you are doing it multiple times, they're not going to pick the same card every single time. And obviously, the method is very, very fooling. You could show this to a magician and they would probably be fooled because it is a very, very fooling method. Um, so, so that's something to consider as well. If I was going to do this, in all honesty, um, I would probably do it slightly differently. And yeah. uh, I think I'd show the symbols and... I, I I think I'd probably just force a particular card, which completely takes away from what a Harrapin's wanting to do. But I think by going down that route, I'm still going to get the reveal and uh, I'm not going to have to worry about a reset because that's the biggest concern for me. Um, yeah, and, and, and then there's just, one, just that one routine. There's not really anything else you can do with these. There's a second routine that Harrapin teaches, but it's basically the same routine, but with the ESP cards instead. And if yeah. you do the ESP cards, there's just as much memory work and there's just as much of a reset. Yeah. Um, and obviously, the other thing that you need to consider is you are going to need a table because yeah. you're having to lay out those cards. You couldn't really do that in your hands. You are going to need a table. Um, so you're going to need a table. There is a reset to this. And there is quite a bit of memory work uh, and there's only one effect now the effect is a good one yeah. but it depends if you want to go down that route to get to it i'm sorry i've done a lot of talking yeah, here but, 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 but this is totally not your style of trick no at all this is what i've let you to read yeah uh it's not ryland's sort of trick at all harrapin is a very clever person i i am constantly blown away and in awe of 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 his creativity i really am um, I wouldn't do this. And the reason I wouldn't do this is because, realistically, I think it's because I do snaps. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. If I'm ever going to do something like this, I'm going to do snaps where I can have the deck shuffled. Uh, I've got multiple different options of where to go. <coughs> if I don't have a table, it's not a problem because I've got routines that I can do in the spectator's hands. And I think that the, the, uh, the use of photos are, is more relatable 
than the use of Chinese uh, characters, flashcards or, or ESP symbols. I think it's more relatable and I also think it, it hides that final reveal better. Yeah. I do, however, think that Harpin's routine's great. When you know, when you did that performance on Thea, and she picked the three, and then you just laid out the things, and it said three, she was flawed. She had no idea. So it's a good trick. Don't get me wrong; it's a good trick. But weighing up the pros and the cons, I'm not going to do it because there's too many cons for a working pro versus the the advantages to it. So I'm going to give it 75. percent It's a it's a good trick. Don't get me wrong. If you saw Ryland's performance and you like it. That's exactly what you're going to do. You just need to memorize it. And it's the sort of thing that once you've memorized it, if you don't do that trick for a month or two, you're probably going to have to memorize it again. Like I bet you, you memorized it to learn that. I bet you can't even remember the memorization for it now. No, there you go. So 75, Rich. yeah, for this trick. No. no. So 75% from me, what are you giving it? Um, I'm going to give it 75%. 75% as well. So it's available from... Wait, you gave me 75%. Yeah, I did, yeah. I thought you said 79. No, 75. So 75% from me, 75% from Ryland. Uh, it's okay. It's not bad. It's an okay trick. There's an overview shelf in the bag. There's an overview shelf in the bag. There's an overview shelf in the bag. Ouch. Sorry. That is another review show in the... Oh, well, what do you say then? Why have you got a Pokemon? Because... Hang on. Why have you got a broken Pokemon? Oh, that's my dad. That Why have you got a broken Pokemon? You need to go. Um, what are we doing? Fight Tom Shard. Uh, go, 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 go. Never work with animals or children. That's another review show in the bag. Thank you once again for joining us right here on Magic TV. I'm Craig. That was Charmander. This is <laughs> Ryland. We'll be back again next week. Don't forget, if you want to follow Ryland on Instagram, no, Facebook, or, or is it Charizard? Sorry, it's Charizard. Charizard. Who knew? Uh, if you want to follow Ryland or uh, or Charizard on Instagram, please do so. Go to Ryland the Kid Magician. Charizard's not on Instagram. How do you know? Have you checked? Yeah. Oh. If you want to follow Ryland on Instagram, go to uh, uh, Ryland the Kid Magician on Facebook, or YouTube, maybe and he's Instagram. On Pokemon's Instagram. If you want to follow Charizard, go follow Pokemon's Instagram because there's a very good chance he'll be on there. And uh, don't forget, if you want to join the Netflix, go to www.thenetflix.com. I'll be back again next week. Don't I'll be back again next week. Thank you so much for watching. Ryan, and say bye. Bye. Have you broken his wing? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you again next ah, week. We're gonna go. fix. We're gonna fix. Attack! Oh, his head. Oh, I think his head came off. Why do I do this to myself? I don't really think he's meant for fighting. He's a Pokemon. That's what Pokemon do. They fight. Why well, come his head came off twice? Because he's made out of Lego. <laughs> He's made out of Lego. <laughs> it's the worst Pokemon ever. We'll be back again next week. Thanks for watching. I'm Craig. He's Ryland. See you again. Bye, everyone. Say bye. Bye.